Hey everyone, it's Brett Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here. And another week, let's talk about what's, what's mostly going to be NHL, but I decided to wear my Hitman gear here because uh, we got some hockey updates overall here. I mean, the NHL definitely is king when it comes to hockey, and they're still committed on returning. Do we know if it's going to be to conclude the 2019 20 NHL? regular season or maybe jump right into the playoffs here but there's some other residual hockey leagues though that uh, might be affected with whatever the NHL decides to do here. I mean first the American Hockey League the which is the farm team below the NHL here they recently decided to uh, call the season cancelled here so there won't be a more or a Calder Cup I should say. A Calder Cup is what uh, is awarded for the championship in the American Hockey League here. And I believe that's the first time ever that the Calder Cup will not be awarded back to, I think, around 1938 when it first came out here. So that's some were thinking that, well, if the AHL has canceled their season and playoffs here, that, well, the NHL is going to follow suit here. Not necessarily here, because uh, it could get messy here that if the NHL decides to return here, not too sure if there's still plans on finishing off the 2019-20 rare season there, as league wider is just under 200 games left when the pause happened here, and most teams still have about 10, 12, maybe 14 games left to play here. But we're also hearing more that NHL might lean towards just jumping right into the playoffs here, and it still sounds like maybe next week after the. Uh, Victoria Day weekend and going into the Memorial Day weekend that the NHL might have some announcements on the return to play here as right now the players are still told to uh, stay you know in quarantine self isolation here which means that they're still planning on returning at some point here and we keep still hearing July here there's no word yet on team facilities being open yet for the NHL here, and the NHL wants to have it so everyone returns at the same time here, but uh, we're possibly hearing that maybe that it might jump right into a playoff here, where it be a 2014 playoff here, and we don't know exactly yet. There's, they're still working on that because there's a return to play committee here, but uh, General Manager Brad Shalivin of the Calgary Flames actually seems optimistic that there's progress being made there and Commissioner Gary Bettman also kept saying that canceling the season was not an option here as they want to salvage it here and of course see all this pushing things back here is ultimately because the NHL obviously wants to have a full 2020-21 season here where we play all 82 games here and full playoffs here but it's definitely going to start later here maybe not start till December, as that's still the speculation here, because if, you know, they're going to come back here. However, if the NHL decides to uh, jump right into a 2014 playoff here, there's still definitely some logistics to figure out on, because if you're going to do a 2014 playoff here, there's definitely teams that are out that they're not going to get the return at all. I know there's some players on those teams that say, well, we don't want to come back if there's nothing meaningful yet to play there. But then on the other hand, I'm mean, definitely looking at teams like Detroit and Ottawa, who are definitely on the bottom of the standings here, that, uh, you know, they could go, well, I mean, if next season is not going to start till November or December here, and the pause happened in the middle of March, that's eight, nine months without having any meaningful hockey. But, uh... And I'm still hearing both ways that they still want to finish off the season and then maybe decide to still have an expanded playoff. Just to try that out here. Just because of that long gap between uh, when the pause button was pressed due to the start of the outbreak picking up here and in fact if they don't return for another, you know, three and a half months here, things could get skewed, especially with players being off for that long here not playing and not playing games here and the fact that some teams could get healthier here I mean that's probably, probably could still be a more fair way to uh, expand the playoffs under these circumstances here because uh, 
you know, competition could be skewed with the long layoff and maybe some injuries coming back here too. But, uh, you know, also you got the fact that teams could still potentially could have picked up ground depending on how you decide, you know, you were going to see these teams if it was on points percentage or where they were at the pause button there. But uh, it's definitely still being figured out here how they're going to figure it out. I mean, did the top two teams in each division, do they get, you know, right in and then everyone else spells it out for you know, the other spots there? Because if they do a 24 team playoff here, you'd have to think the top eight, some sort, would get a buy into, let's say, the first round. And then, because then you still have to have 16 teams to balance it out to eliminate, you know, eight teams and then reseed it that way. But uh, that's still all speculative here. But the other thing is, is there's definitely going to be some interesting rules put in place here because, uh, you know, if everyone comes back here, when it's deemed safe, you know, with, uh, you know, health authorities and the government here, that the NHL is definitely leaning towards up cities. It's definitely probably be the best way to do it here and definitely sounds like Vancouver and area definitely is the strongest candidate here because actually Commissioner Gary Bettman and Premier British Columbia John Horgan definitely were talking about having Vancouver host as a hub city here. You almost got to wonder could all hockey be played in Canada to conclude the regular season or playoffs or whatever they decide to do here just because of the restriction that's still in place with the Canada-U.S. border that's only, you know, still barred from not a sense of travel. And if you're traveling from the United States into Canada here, that you'd have to isolate for 14 days is that restriction is still in place up until June 21st here. So they expanded it yet another month here. So uh, that's definitely another reason why the timeline that the NHL, it sounds like they're making progress that uh, there's going to be play here soon here when deemed safe and you know, I have a feeling that maybe all the hub cities could be in Canada here because we're definitely here in Vancouver we're here in Edmonton is uh, another strong Canada. I don't hear Calgary being considered as a hub city here and then you know here Toronto out in east there I know some American cities they've heard of is maybe Columbus heck I barely even heard uh, you know Florida and Arizona that could definitely be interesting and definitely could stir the pot here and people can joke about, well, there's no fans that go to those games anyway, but uh, they're definitely in warmer climates here, and if hockey's not going to return until July, that's definitely the warmest time of the year there. I mean, it's hot and dry in Arizona and hot and humid in Florida there, but uh, I might almost think I'm leaning towards hearing that maybe all hub games will be played in Canada here, just because I mean, the cost would be a little less for that. And you have to you eliminate the uh, variable with the border restriction if it's still in place there, and the fact that the more availability of healthcare. That's what I'm hearing here, and obviously with all these major league sports here, I mean there have to be a wide availability of testing for this COVID-19 or coronavirus, and then have to put protocols in place there if uh, you know someone happened to get sick by it, and then of course uh, there's still that you know. How are they going to, you know, go back to their families there? Or, I think there's still a couple more things that are still you know, up in the air at this point here. So, uh, obviously I'll make videos on that. But it still sounds like we're getting closer towards that there will actually be hockey here soon here. Based on what we're hearing in the media here, I know it's not going to be the same hockey. Because we're hearing things like, uh, I mean, obviously you're going to be seeing players with more full face shields there. Especially, uh... You know, especially with the, this being a respiratory thing. And, you know, there's definitely going to be more bans on fighting. You know, scrums after the whistle there. That's still going to be interesting to see how that's going to work. If they do come back and players are playing in empty arenas there. And then, you know, eventually have playoffs and Stanley Cup there. Hmm. You know, you hear ideas about, you know, some networks playing on putting CGI fans and uh, fans in and noise in. I wonder, let's just say we do award the Stanley Cup here. I wonder if the networks would be funny and troll Bretman by putting booing in when he does his speech about the, awarding the Stanley Cup there. Because it would be the first time Bretman's not going to get booed when he awards the Stanley Cup here. Especially if it's in Canada where these games are played here. But there won't be any fans here. But, uh, you know, those are all the 
things that we're hearing here. But it's definitely still going to be interesting to know what's going to happen with all the other minor leagues here because, uh, I mean, we're hearing that the Canadian Hockey League, where, you know, the Hitmen play, for example, here. I mean, at least the Hitmen are owned by the Calgary Flames, so they'd probably be better off than some other independently owned teams. And same with the American Hockey League because uh, Hitmen, Canadian Hockey League, and, you know, the American Hockey League, those leagues are definitely more gate-driven. And if they're going to play with no fans here, how are they going to survive here? And you're hearing that some American Hockey League teams could be in trouble here if they won't have fans here. Because uh, to all the fans that say, well, why don't they just cancel it all here and wait till next October here? Well, what happens if we're still kind of in the same, you know, phase we're in right now? I know, for example, in Alberta and many other provinces in Canada and I know it seems like it's more stringent in Canada than actually in the U.S. with some states about reopening their economies here. I know for a case with Alberta, they took a regional approach because the city of Calgary and Brooks definitely have had more cases because we've had a couple outbreaks in workplaces here. But, uh, for example, in Alberta, I mean, we're entering into phase one where they easing on restrictions where you can still go to the store. They actually recently increased the gatherings up to 50 outside here. But, uh, so phase three is the last phase in Alberta, where it does allow large gatherings to come back here. I don't think we're going to be there yet, and many other provinces have announced that, uh, they ban pretty much concerts and sporting events for the whole year. So, if people say, well, they should cancel it now, wait till October here, I think we're still going to be in the same spot here, or maybe there'll be fewer restrictions of travel here. But fans not allowed at the game, so this would be a dry run for that because it's, it seems like that uh, it will be unlikely fans will be allowed to go to the game, any events here next season, whenever it starts here. So, and then the fact that it's trying to recoup as much of the losses as you can, at least if you can televise games and stay relevant, because let's say you know you go from March up until October where you have no hockey, you won't be as relevant. And uh, definitely, you know, people would be starving for new content elsewhere too. So uh, that's why it's still worth to trying to, uh, you know, salvage it and still continue on here. to stay relevant here. I know that uh, all these other things are talking about with the NHL here, that the entry draft sounds like it'll be pushed back, which uh, I know there were some hesitancy and how is this kind of thing, how are you going to make it work if you're going to have a draft before you finish up the season and playoffs here? Because you know you need approval from the general managers and understand really that, uh, you know, there's pushback there and I think they definitely should push off the draft where they can once they figure out how they're going to play on ice again because uh, there's just still too many, you know, contingency with conditional picks and the fact that how are you going to have your lottery? How are you going to decide where each team goes in draft here. And then the fact that, uh, you know, one of the exciting things about draft day is all the speculation on trades here. But if you had to draft before uh, you finish up the season here, I mean, because you got to remember this whole time here, there's a roster freeze. I mean, the only transactions that have been made during this time here after the deadline and the pause here has been either signing, you know, prospects from all over the world or, NCAA, which I made a few videos on that, or signing already your prospects to NCAA deals. So that, I mean, that still is going on here, but I'm talking about, you know, making trades or signing free agents here, which still needs to figure that out too. And it would definitely be, it's not going to be the same draft because it'll definitely be done virtually here. And the fact that, uh, you know, all the excitement of trades and speculation would be out the window if we had the draft still in June here. So I think all those updates will still come next week by sounds of it. And I'll definitely make a video on that here. But it's still encouraging to hear that, you know, higher up say we're not going to cancel the season or that's not an option. And some general managers, including Brad Trelevin, who's closer to it than obviously I am as a fan, he seems optimistic here, but it's definitely not going to be the same Hockey, how everything's interacted here. I should also add in that uh, coaches are going to look like ninjas here. I'm not too sure if they're going to just have the mask or, or are they also going to be wearing a full face shield too. It's, 
it's definitely going to be interesting how they're going to figure this out. And uh, it also would be nice to, you know, talk about games again here. But uh, with, you know, the NHL still figuring this out here, the other leagues are definitely more in flux here with the American Hockey League saying that they're, you know, going to cancel the season here. And a third of the teams in the AHL are actually independently owned here. And uh, it might be a situation where you might have some franchises that share, you know, affiliation, which... That makes it messier because I remember that one time the Calgary Flames did not have an HL team. After they played in St. John, the Flames there, they shared with the Little Lock Monsters, I remember one point there. And they were sharing with the Carolina Hurricanes at the time. They definitely made it misty to try to, especially if you have a goalie. And I know I remember at the time we drafted Brent Cron and he didn't get to play because he was playing behind Cam Ward at the time when we shared the affiliation with Lowell there. And he can only have so much players there, but that could be, you know, something that may watch out for here too if uh, you know if the American Hockey League cannot play with fans next season and you know I've had some people ask me about what have you heard about the hitman the next season here well I don't know yet but uh, I, I'd be interested to know how that's going to work because if fans aren't going to be allowed at games yet especially if the health authority and the government doesn't deem it safe yet and it's definitely going to be the last thing that's going to be you know checked off is uh and then you almost have a feeling that might not happen unless there's either a vaccine or an effective proven treatment option. And uh, depending on how, you know, cases go, once things start reopening here, it's slowly happening here in Alberta and other parts of the country and in the U.S. too. And uh, But, uh, you know, it's at least encouraging their sports back here. So anyway, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey, all the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders, I also talk Calgary Sports on my channel here, but I also do personal vlogs, attempt at comedy, and I also do videos when I'm on the road or at a sporting event here. But I don't think I'm going to be doing those activities anytime soon here, given what's been going on. But if that all sounds like you'd be interested to watch, do follow along with this Calgary Sports fans journey. You know what you need to do, and I also have my other social media links down in the description below there for other ways you can follow along with me there. And it's a, at least... It's been kind of fun to make these videos to speculate on how sports could come back here, especially during this time, and something to look back on in retrospect whenever, you know, hopefully we get through this and look back at it on retrospect here. But, as I say, I'll see you in the next video here.